Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. It is me Desiree and today I wanted to recreate a look that I did um, for work recently. So we were doing like a, um, hold on, I need something on my lips. Anyway, we were doing like a back to school promotion and we were doing an 80s day, like an 80s theme. So several people at work dressed up and I did like a pink mesh top with like a black shirt underneath, my hair to the side with like a zebra print thing, the cheetah print shoes, the clashing patterns, the bright colors, but I did bright eye makeup and strong blush. And I loved it. It actually made me fall in love with the blush that I was going to declutter. Um, it was weird. I just really loved the way it looked. So I wanted to recreate the look for you today because I thought it would just be fun. And I used the Morphe and Lisa Frank palette and I thought, what more appropriate palette is there to recreate something that, you know, would be 80s inspired? So this is the way the palette looks. It's completely colorful. I used a bunch of shades from this. And I've had this for a long time. I got it right when it came out and I'm pretty sure it's still available. I think Morphe has this as one of their uh, permanent products. Um, it is on Ulta's website. Actually, let me double check that. Yeah, they still have it on their website at Ulta, but it is online only. I love this palette. It blends pretty well. There are a few shades I don't love, but oddly enough, they performed great the other day when I wore this. So I am going to do eyes first, so let's zoom in a little bit. I Let me pull this hair up too, because it's, it's kind of warm in here. I was going to do this early in the morning, and then I went outside and watered my plants, and I took the dog out, and then before you know it, I was overheated, and then I thought, let me go do the video now. I look like an egg. Why does my head look like a shape like an egg? Okay, so I already have on eye primer, and the secret weapon for me were actually these Line and Define eye tapes from e.l.f. I have had these for probably five years, like no joke. I bought these so long ago, and I've only used one, two, three, four, five, and I used one of them the other day. I just never find a use for these. Um, they're also way too sticky for me, and when I pull them off, they really like pull up your skin, and I don't want to do that to this delicate eye area. They're very, very sticky, but they will make your eyeshadow look like cut. And I don't usually like my eye makeup to look like that, so I don't really have a use for these. But they worked really, really well um, the other day. And they're so long. I mean, I guess I could have cut this in half, but I don't really... I, I know I'm going to have these for a million years, so I'm not really too concerned with trying to save as many as I can. The trick, though, is getting them even. So, like, I feel like this one's lower than this one. Let me move this one up a little bit. Ugh, ugh, it's so uncomfortable to pull these off. They're just a little too sticky for me. But they're gonna, no eyeshadow is gonna go underneath these. They stick to your eyelids so well. Are those even? They feel even. It's just, you know how your eye shapes are different? I feel like I, they look uneven, but I'm pretty sure they are. Anyway. So I'm going to go in with this pink one here called Puppy Love. It's the brightest, pinkest one in the palette. This one right here. And I'm going to blend that out here because I want this to look like a pink wing. And you blend it right on top of the tape. No eyeshadow is going to go underneath them. And although it is kind of annoying to take it off, they, they do work. They work really well. And I'm going to go almost all the way up to the eyebrow because I want it to be like, I don't know, big. All right, then I'm going to go into an orange and I'm going to use the shade Balloon Buddies, this one right here. No, do I want to use Hunter? Nah, Balloon Buddies. Let's just go with that one. I'm going to do orange here and kind of blend it into the pink. to kind of make it look a little gradient. Oh, I feel like I had too much. Okay, let's do more pink out here. There we go. It kind of like blended the pink away or the orange kind of looked like it was just pink. All right, a little more pink, just to deepen it up a little more. Perfect. All right, now I'm going to lightly wipe off that brush and I'm going to get the yellow one here on the corner. It's called Sunflower, that bright yellow, and I'm going to work that also into the orange. 
and a little bit on top of the pink. All right, back to the orange balloon buddies. Just gonna kind of add a little more of that back. That's the kind of thing with adding a bunch of colors and blending around is sometimes the color you put on just disappears and you gotta kind of reintroduce it, um, but everything works out in the end. I'm gonna do a little more pink right here. I see like a bald spot. All right. I think this side needs a little bit more orange right here. Ooh, I really like it. Can you see the gradient? I don't know if you can see it. Like, if, if, I don't think the camera's picking up like the subtleties of the gradient. That's kind of the thing with camera and video. It doesn't pick up everything and everything always looks different in person. All right, then I'm gonna go in with the shade called Purse, Purcilla. I bet that's a cat's name. It's this one right here. It's like a shimmery um, purple, like really, really pretty. And I'm gonna put that on the lid. It's not super pigmented. I mean, it looks exactly the way that it does in the pan, but it's not too different. Like it's not purple purple. So it doesn't look like, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but I feel like it meshes well with what I have on. Kind of looks good with that pink in the outer corner. Close up that palette. And then the moment you've all been waiting for. Ugh. It, it, it works, but it's, see how it like pulls at your skin? I don't like that. Ugh. But look at that, look at that cut line. I just really, really like it. And I never like eyeshadow like that. Ugh. Ah, look how clean that looks. And like I said, I never ever like the way eyeshadow looks like that. I just think it looks funny, but I think I love it. I think I love it now. Like I wanna try this with every eyeshadow look now. Um, the trick is just try to get them even because I did do them like this one time and like just a little off, but I think I got them pretty even here. Okay, let me see if I have any fallout. I will, bleh, bleh, bleh. So the foundation I'm gonna use is the Makeup Forever Ultra HD foundation. I just freaking love this foundation so much. I use two pumps. Uh, this was a foundation that I actually used to be like Eh, about just very indifferent and I shopped my stash for it one time I used it every day for two weeks and I fell in love with it I think it's just such a great formula I mean I'm sure it's a, a classic for makeup forever and it's for good reason it's really really pretty on the skin looks skin like it doesn't look like you have foundation on but you're all your like Okay, for some reason, the door popped open on its own and it scared the crap out of me. Um, and then I peeked my head out the door and then my boyfriend was right there in the hallway. So anyway, blended in all the foundation and I'm gonna throw on some concealer. I'm gonna use the Dior Backstage Flash Perfector Concealer. I love this stuff and I keep meaning to do a review on it and like comparison and which other concealers I have that are similar but I really, really like it. And I love this little applicator. It's just like a brush, like a brush tip, uh, like as if you put uh, put it on a flat concealer brush. I just think it's really nice. Very skin-like, again, I think it works well with pretty much every foundation I've used. I use it on its own all the time, like without any foundation at all. Love the coverage I get, love the longevity. It's really pretty. Uh, the only thing is on, on the under eyes, it does crease. It's just really emollient and really moisturizing. So in that area, it doesn't really like dry down or anything. So it will develop a crease and then all day I'm kind of patting out the crease. But it looks pretty on the under eye, so I don't really mind. Just not gonna do that today though. And then a rediscovered favorite, the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye. I mean, this is always a favorite, but I always default to like my favorite under eye concealers. Of course, the Tarte Tarte, the Tarte Tarte. The Tarte CC Under Eye Corrector is my all-time fave. And I've had this little tiny tube. This was a free sample, a free gift with purchase, or it was a 100 point perk, I don't remember. But I've had this for at least three years, if not four years, and it's still going strong. And I use this all the time. You just need 
the tiniest, tiniest little bit to go on your under eyes. I thought I was gonna use this whole thing up really quickly, so I did buy the full size, and I haven't even used it. Um, it just, this little one is still just going strong. So it's extremely full coverage, I mean extreme. And you need the tiniest little bit. A little goes a long way. So if you put too much, uh, it's gonna be kinda hard to get rid of it and like remove it. So start slow, you can always add more. And I would say definitely less is more with this stuff. But look how fast that worked. That little tiny bit, it will last all day. It will not crease at all. Not even like those initial creases that you get when you first put concealer on. It won't do that either. It won't settle to any of these fine lines I have here. Wears all day long, it never looks heavy. Um, if you use a little bit, it doesn't look heavy, but if you start with too much, cause you're used to using like a lot of concealer, it will look heavy, no doubt. Um, but it looks really, really nice with just a little bit. A powder that I have been loving is this one from CoverGirl, the Advanced Radiance Pressed Powder. I have this in the shade Creamy Natural. I did shop my stash for this and I've been wearing it every single day. It reminds me a lot of the Milani Prep Set and Glow Powder. It has the same kind of like satin finish, like it sets your makeup in place with a little bit of satin finish, satin finish. Doesn't take away any of the glow you might have had from your foundation, but just just sets it all in place and makes it look nice and I really, really like it. I didn't know if bronzer was a thing back in the 80s, um, but I, I had to wear bronzer. Like I just felt funny without it. And the one I've been wearing regularly lately is the L'Oreal Infallible Fresh Wear Bronzer. I have here the shade 250 Light and I really like this. It does have the same scent as the powder and the foundation in the same line. Um, it doesn't bother me at all, it just smells a little bit like alcohol, but it does go away. And I think this is a really, really pretty color. Just really, really natural, blends really easily, just gives you that nice little sun-kissed look. And I really like it. And L'Oreal hasn't come out with a bronzer in a long time. Um, I think the last one they came out with was... The one that's like this big, I don't know what it's called now, I have the old packaging, but that is one of my all-time favorite bronzers, not just drugstore, just in general, it's one of my favorites. And besides that one, L'Oreal hasn't come out with one in, I don't think, ever. Um, so I think it's really nice that they actually have bronzers now, and they have a really good shade range, they have some really deep colors, and um, I think they did a really good job with this one. <clears throat> I don't know, Hi I'm sure highlighter was not a thing back then, but... Another product where I was like, I can't. I have to still feel like myself and I still have to like the makeup that I'm wearing. So this is the Jaclyn Cosmetics Iced Highlighter. I freaking love this. I use it all the time. Definitely a yearly favorite. Um, it's one of my favorite highlighters I've ever purchased. It is so freaking pretty. It's just this really nice, I don't even know how to describe the color because it looks champagne-y in here, but on the face it's more like icy but it doesn't have that gray undertone. Like I rarely find icy highlighters that don't look gray. And this one is just the bomb. I love it so, so, so much. All right, now time for the blush. This is, where's the brush that I used? I think it was this one. So this is the Makeup by Mario Soft Pop Powder Blush in the shade Desert Rose. And this is the blush I was talking about that I was going to declutter. I really didn't like this. I mean, it was fine, but it wasn't, exciting me wasn't doing anything for me until someone outside um until i wore it for the 80s thing and i kind of really built it up because i wanted it to look kind of strong and i fell in love with it i loved the color i loved the way that it looked so i'm just gonna put it kind of strong up here on the cheekbone and like up this way I just love it. I love this color. I love the way that it looks. I love the way that it looked with the eye makeup. Um, all right, eyebrows already. Uh, just the usual stuff. I'm using the Kosas Brow Pop Brow Pencil. I also used the uh, NYX Thick It Stick It Brow Mascara because I know in the 80s, like, everyone had some big brows and uh, I don't have any brows. I'm actually using the Ordinary... Um, the Peptide Brow Serum, like Brow and Lash Serum. 
And I mean, my eyebrows look the same, so I guess I'll say so far so good. It's not irritating them at all, it's not doing anything negative. But of course with something like that, it's not gonna work overnight, but I mean, if it works at all, I'll be happy because my eyebrows are extremely thin, as you can see. Got super cloudy all of a sudden. I feel like my eyes, like I'm having a hard time adjusting my eyes. It's fine, it'll change again here in a second, I think. So after I put this on, I do like to let it dry for just a sec and then I add some more powder in because it doesn't like fill them in perfectly and I do like them to look a little, I don't know, fuller and less sparse. So I will put some more powder here in a second. Uh, but for now, let's move on to the lower lash line. And I'm gonna go in with a green. I think I'm gonna use this one here called Zoomer and Zorbit. Okay, it's that one right there. Zorbit, they were just making stuff up, I think. You know what, I actually think I wanna, let me grab that powder brush. My under eyes look a little bit glossy. I don't have any extra powder on this brush, I'm just gonna kinda use it for any excess and try to tone down that glossiness just a little bit. All right, back to Zoomer and Zorbit. Gonna use this on the lower lash line. I think I kind of do wanna do that blue on the inner corner. I don't know. Just gonna kind of blend the eyeshadow a little bit more up here. Just feel like it needs a little bit more blending. And then right here where I put concealer, I'm just gonna kind of go back over that. Make sure the concealer didn't erase any of the eyeshadow, which it usually does. You know what, I think I am gonna do the blue on the inner corner like I did the other day because I just, I just liked it and I feel like I'm missing it. So I'm gonna get a flat brush and I'm gonna use that shade here called Angel Kitty. I've never actually read the names on these shadows before, I guess. Um, and I'm just gonna get this flat brush and I'm gonna put it right here like on the inner part of the lid and kind of press it and drag it a little bit. Press it and kind of drag it. Get that shimmery shade again that I originally had used. I'm gonna put that back on top where the blue kind of covered it up, just so it kind of looks like it blends a little bit better together. I don't know if you can even see in the, vid in the video, but it makes a difference to me. So eyes done. I just wanna put on some black eyeliner and some mascara. I know this isn't like historically accurate. I know the blush probably would have been like a deeper color, more strong, but I still wanted to feel like myself and I still wanted to like the makeup. But this is just like my take on it and just being inspired by that, by the era. Eyeliner, I'm gonna use the Tarte Surfer Curl Eyeliner. This is just like a, um, just a black cream gel eyeliner. It lasts like crazy. It's really good, it's super creamy too. I think the eyeliner just makes a really big difference in, I don't know, it just kind of like gives it a little balance. Um, and the mascara that I'm gonna use too is really like a big one. I'm gonna use the One Size Fantasize Mascara. This is the mini. I like the mascara, but I don't like the packaging of the mini mascara because the lid is too close to the base of the wand and I find the lid touching my skin when I'm trying to use it. I just find it to be a slight annoyance, but this does wear all day. It flakes a little bit, but the flakes like come off right away, they don't stay there. Um, it doesn't transfer, smear, or smudge, but it does flake a little bit. Which I don't mind, because the flakes just kind of fall right off, they don't like stick on or smear or anything. The bristles on this brush are really long, and they're not long all over, they have like gaps in between. So it took me a little bit to learn how close to get to the base of my lashes with this because I kept scratching um, the base of my lashes. Like I could feel it really close to my eye. It does take a little bit to get them to look how I like because it, it kind of sticks the lashes together and it makes me look like I have like six or seven really thick lashes. It doesn't really separate them that well. So it does take a little bit of messing with. Um, what I end up doing usually is getting my lash separator. I got this from Ulta Beauty, it's the Ulta brand. 
and you just kind of run it through your lashes and it kind of takes out the clumps. And I usually have to use this every time I use this mascara just because it, it just sticks them together too much. So I did forget setting spray and I don't like putting setting spray on after I already have mascara on because I just feel like it makes the mascara wet, the lashes stick together, it's just a big mess. So I'm not going to do setting spray I guess today. But that's it, that's the look complete, my little 80s inspired look. I love the way that the eyeshadow came out. I'm actually shocked that this palette blends as nicely as it does because I know I've used this in the past that I don't remember it being like absolutely amazing, but I kind of want to use it all the time now. I think I'm going to add, you know what, a little inner corner highlighter real quick, just cause, why not? I'm going to use the one I used on my, uh, on my face, the Jaclyn one, just to add a little pop of something to the inner corner. You probably can't even see it, but I know it's there. Anyway, that is it. My little bright eye makeup that I wore for my 80s day the other day. I really, really love this. And I was so, I was just loving it. And I was having so much fun doing it that morning when I was getting ready for work. And I'm like, why don't I do eye makeup like this all the time? This was really fun. And these eye tapes really came in and saved the day. I, keep, I think it kind of added a lot of structure to the look when it, you know, usually my blending's kind of sloppy and it could kind of just be all over the place. And I feel like this just really made it look Nice, and I really like it. Anyway, that is it. What's with this piece of my hair? Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe so you don't miss the next one, and I will see you later in another video. Goodbye.